If you want to get your keynote presentation slides into Ecamm Live, there are a number of different ways that you can do it, and I'm going to tell you all about them and the pros and cons of each one. In Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and in this video, we're talking specifically about getting your presentation slides from Keynote into Ecamm Live. Now, I will be making another similar video all about how you can do the same with PowerPoint because there are a couple of differences. So I want to just keep those two videos separate. I'll also be making a video all about best practices when you are using presentation slides within uh, your video productions or whether you're using them also just using Ecamm Live as a virtual cam to deliver content into your uh, Microsoft Teams or Zoom meetings or whatever that may be. Incidentally, the reason I started using Ecamm Live was because I've created a couple of courses that are completely unrelated to the subject matter that I cover in this video. Uh, uh, channel uh, so I won't uh, be cross <laughs> promoting that here however I did uh, as I say use Ecamm Live for that and uh, was using presentation material heavily within there as well there is a time and a place to uh, incorporate presentations and slides into your content and so if you are somebody who needs to do that then as I say this video is for you so without further ado let's get straight on into the uh, processes. Now, first of all, I should say that uh, whilst I'm going to make a video all about best, best practices, what I'm going to show you doesn't necessarily follow those best practices, but you'll see what I mean in a moment. So here you go. We've got really quite a boring slide, haven't we? Uh, the reason why I've not added anything in here in terms of maybe some imagery to uh, enforce the points that I'm making or anything like that is because uh, this is just intended to be a totally generic uh, slide in order to illustrate a couple of points to be aware of with these different methods of bringing uh, slides or content into your presentations. Now what I'm intending is that uh, this slide has got some text on it, maybe a little bit too much text if you want my real opinion, <laughs> but never mind. Uh, and then we've got a space over on the right hand side where we will have the video of the presenter, in this case me. Because normally I would recommend that you do uh, have the main delivery method of the content being you, <laughs> being able to uh, add uh, any sort of uh, animated gestures or whatever you might need to do in order to get your point across. And the text text that is on screen should always be in service of what it is that you're actually trying to say and uh, in support of that rather, uh, rather than being the dominant factor. Another point to bear in mind uh, when you are putting any text or bullet points, if you do need them, onto the screen is always to make sure that you aren't putting them on before you've actually talked about them. There is uh, something very distracting uh, by uh, having words on the screen that do not yet have any context and so were you to be delivering a, a wonderful presentation like this virtual one that I've <laughs> prepared here you would want to make sure that these bullet points are delivered as you are making the points and that leads me on to uh, or that will rather <laughs> become apparent later when we actually start to uh, implement this and bring it into Ecamm Live so if I just show you for a moment what this presentation might look like I'm going to come over here and uh, play it in a window. So this will load the presentation up. So as I was talking, I'm making all of these amazing points. And uh, if I did really absolutely need the text on the screen, then it might be something like this. Uh, I'm literally just clicking with my fingers at the moment, but you could similarly use a, uh, a presentation clicker or there's a way to do it with the mobile, which I'll talk about later as well. But for the moment, I'm just uh, sort of illustrating the point that we do want these uh, bullet points to come up at a specific time. Uh, that we are in control of and not all delivered at once. And so this brings me on to the first uh, method. Here we've got two slides. I've been just used exactly the same words, but slide one and two. And uh, the first way that we're going to do it is we're going to create a scene with a PDF. Now, uh, up until a week or two ago, I was actually creating separate scenes for each slide uh, until I watched uh, Demo Mo Pros with Alicia Way and uh, Kirk Nugent was on there and mentioned the PDF method. So uh, full credit where credit is due. That's where I learned this from, although it is a built-in feature in Ecamm Live. But uh, anyway, so the first step is to come into uh, a Keynote and then what we want to do is to go to Export and we're going to export this uh, as a PDF. Uh, the one thing that we want to make sure is we've uh, got the image quality 
uh, at the best quality so that it's going to be uh, best quality on the screen uh, but then also you remember that I mentioned we want those bullet points to come up uh, when we uh, want them to rather than all at once well that is why we need to click this button here the uh, checkbox rather print each stage of the builds so each of those little animation steps in keynote is called a build I've done uh, various uh, other videos which I'll link to in the description about uh, animation in keynote where I explain all about build ins and build outs and so on uh, but we want to make sure that we've got that checked so that each of those individual builds becomes a page of the PDF but this will all become clear in a moment so what we want to do now is click next to go and export this as a PDF I'm going to save it in uh, there as keynote demo and then what I'm going to do is uh, one second click on that one and now if I come out of my screen sharing and I come into demo mode on uh, Ecamm live you'll see that we've got this presentation sitting here in this folder so this is now a PDF and if I just preview this pressing space you can see that we've now got a page of the PDF for each of the uh, bullet points and for each of the slides so you can see that we've got uh, two slides but there are significantly more uh, pages of the PDF than that so now what we want to do is get this actually into Ecamm Live and it couldn't be easier I've created a blank uh, scene which I'm calling method one this is the first method to get the uh, slides in and all you're going to do is just simply drag this and drop it and there we go it is now in Ecamm Live in that scene and you can see that if I hover over it we've got page one of 14 and if I click the little arrows we can go through our different points you can also use the left and right arrow keys as well and that will also cycle through the points forwards and backwards going forwards and backwards through the pages of the PDF now obviously I've uh, created this slide with a particular idea in mind and if I come over to my scenes and add in my uh, camera then this is obviously the point so what I'm going to do is come over to here I'm going to change this to a uh, custom shape and then drag this out like this so now we can see that uh, the point is obviously being able to deliver the content but having the uh, slides uh, next to me so uh, now uh, this is how you would sort of cycle through and then deliver all of the content having the slide the uh, points coming up next to you but you can see how if you did have uh, maybe you wouldn't have a uh, the video the camera feed in here if you did want to just deliver a a static presentation or something that you had uh, created previously then it, exactly the same method would apply you just export to PDF you drop it into the scene and then you just use the forward and backward arrows to cycle through all of those different slides now if I just come out of my uh, demo mode for a moment and I come back into my screen sharing because over here I've now got my stream deck because there is one thing that I should point out uh, once again thank you Ecamm Live for all of the great uh, built-in functionality you have given us for uh, the stream deck but one of the uh, actions that they have built in is previous page on PDF and next page on PDF so if you just drop those onto your stream deck if you are a stream deck user then rather than using the left and right arrow keys you can just use the buttons on your stream deck so now I'm pressing my left and right buttons and I don't need to uh, reach over to the keyboard to control it from there and also incidentally that means that if you do uh, click out of Ecamm Live and you're in maybe another uh, application or something like that then you still will always be able to cycle through those different points of your PDF so that is a really good and uh, easy way to get your presentation slides into Ecamm Live it also means that you don't need to have Keynote running either on your Mac or have it running on an external source and it does really sort of help with uh, keeping your processor usage down by having it just all as a simple PDF so there are a couple of other ways that you can uh, bring it in and thinking about processor usage still uh, one way would be to have it running on an external device so be that an external computer a secondary computer or an iPad or a uh, iPhone for example now what I've done is I've actually got this same presentation running here on this iPad and I've just simply plugged that in using the uh, cable into my laptop and that now funnily enough shows up as a camera input in Ecamm Live without any other setup required so if I go over to uh, this blank scene and I just share my uh, screen with you once again now what I'm going to do here is I've uh, already got the uh, the slides up in fact if I just come out of them for one moment and then I'll just drag on uh, here to a camera 
So there we go, back to me again. And if I click on here, then what we should see in here is we've also got the iPad Pro just there. So if I just click on iPad Pro, uh, now we can see that this is what I'm seeing on my iPad Pro. Now we want to just change the dimensions of this. We don't want it widescreen. We want to set it to uh, custom and it will just automatically fit there. And so now I've got these slides. So you can edit slides in, um, uh, in Keynote on the iPad. Uh, personally, I prefer to use the desktop, but if I just come and press the little uh, play button at the top of the slides, uh, then now we just need to resize this uh, like that. And so we've now got our slides. I'm operating this from Ecom, uh, from uh, sorry, Keynote on the iPad, and I've got exactly the same effect. So I could then go and add in my uh, camera overlay like this. Uh, whoops, don't want to move that one out of the way. Always remember to uh, lock your scenes. <laughs> and if I drag that one out now and uh, change that aspect ratio again to custom. And so there we go. I've got the same effect as I had before. Maybe just need to zoom my camera a little bit and readjust the position of it. So now I've got my exactly the same setup as I had before. The difference is that this is now being run off my iPad. So that's a great way to do it if you don't want to have a processor usage uh, hogging your, your system. The other good thing about doing this is it allows you to do uh, some slightly more fancy graphics. So let's have a little look at how we can do that. And when I say slightly more fancy, I mean slightly in the very real sense. <laughs> So I'm going to come out of that presentation for a moment and then I'm just going to come over to my screen sharing again. I'm going to show you a slight variation of that presentation. And uh, the difference with this, as you'll notice, it's got a green background. Uh, that may give you a clue as to what we're going to do next. Because the thing about that previous presentation was it was very much sort of static on the screen in terms of uh, we had the camera on one side or the video on one side rather from the camera. And then we had the presentation down the other side. Uh, you could do it as a sort of window with the camera in uh, inside a, uh, you know, a window, for example, within the presentation. That would be another option. And both of those methods could work like that. But what if you want the actual content over the top of your camera? camera. Well, that is what we're going to look at with these next two options. And uh, so here I have, as you can see, made a slight variation of this, the scene where we've got the points just as we had before, equally dull and boring <laughs> in this background. Now, I've actually made this purposefully uh, quite similar to the uh, green of the green screen, just to show a point here. But what we're going to do is we want to try and deliver this with a little bit more animation this time. If I just play this in window, uh, what we're going to try and do is have the uh, points come from the side. So the actual box flies in from the side. We can deliver all of our absolutely wonderful content, uh, leaving people absolutely riveted and wanting more. And then afterwards it slides out. So that is the little sort of silly animation that I've done just to illustrate the point of how you can actually bring this into your scenes. Now what I've done is I've also got that on my iPad as well. So I can just go straight back to my iPad view now. Uh, so if I click back to that scene that we've just created, uh, now you can see that it's sort of taking over the screen a little bit, isn't it? So I need to actually change this around. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my camera to the back and then I'm going to hide my uh, uh, presentation for a moment. And I'm just going to make my uh, picture full screen again and maybe zoom it back to the way it normally is. There we go. That's back to my, my normal view. So what we want is for this panel to fly in from the side and uh, give us all of those different points. So if I switch it back on again now and actually just go full screen in iPad. So now we've got a blank screen and if I cycle through, you can see that everything's working. But what we need to do is if I just go into my screen sharing again, into demo mode rather, uh, now, uh, what we want to do is we want to get rid of that green screen. Well, just as if it was a camera, you can actually come over here to the camera effects and you'll see that the iPad Pro is there because it's plugged directly in. And all you have to do is toggle on the green screen and it will put in the default background. But don't forget, you don't have to have a background with green screen. You can change it to transparent. So we just come over there and turn that on. And hey, presto, we've got our slide over the top. But one thing you'll notice is there is a slight sort of halo around it uh, and it's uh, not quite keying out properly. So if that happens, then just come over to the uh, green screen levels and then just adjust that. So you can see if I turn that right down, then you can really see that sort of blurring of the edges. 
where the sort of blue color is coming into the uh, green of the green screen but if we turn it the other way it will actually just uh, eliminate that but one thing you will notice is that the colors in this if I come back to my other one you can see that the color has changed slightly because of the blue screen uh, the green screen effect rather uh, because it is eliminating that element of the uh, the color so this is not going to give you a perfectly accurate color uh, doing it this way if you have to is a, a better way if you need to be accurate with your color or alternatively try and use colors that are you know not in the green spectrum although I realize that might not always be possible uh, so there is another little cheating way that I'll show you to do uh, how to do this at the end as well uh, but for now this is basically how you can do that using PowerPoint and green screen now if you don't want to run it from a uh, an iPad or you don't have a uh, an iPad did I say PowerPoint earlier I meant uh, <laughs> I meant keynote and iPad uh, you can also run it from within keynote on the desktop so let's have a look at exactly how we'll do that now I've uh, got another scene and let me just add in my uh, camera overlay uh, so that you can uh, I don't know if it's a benefit if you can see me when I'm talking to you, but there you go. We're, what we're now going to do is if I drag Keynote over to this uh, side here, and I'll just make it a little bit smaller because we don't actually need it that bag, uh, that uh, big. <laughs> uh, now, what we want to do is we want to basically capture this somehow and bring it into the uh, scene. Now I talked in another video which I'll link to about an application called NDI Scan Converter and that allows you to basically grab onto any particular window and uh, pull that into your scene. Uh, you can obviously do this with screen sharing as well in terms of you have the screen sharing option uh, in, uh, in the scene when you are in Ecamm Live you can have the source as a screen share. The thing about that is you can't actually do a green screen effect on a screen share. So what you could have is you could have the presentation and you could click play and have it play to a secondary monitor. And if you don't have a secondary monitor, you could have a little dummy monitor <laughs> using one of these virtual monitors. I'll uh, leave a link to a video I did all about that uh, in the description as well. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we've got one screen and uh, we're going to do this. We want to have the green screen effect as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the uh, 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 play and rather than uh, play as slideshow, which would play it as full screen, we want to play slideshow in window. So if I click on that one, so this is in Keynote, bear in mind, and not in Ecamm. We've now got this window here that is our presentation. And now what we can do is we can go down to our NDI scan converter and open that up. I'll leave a link, obviously, to the video all about NDI scan converter. But now we can just go down to uh, check on the uh, window we want, which is Keynote. And if I click on that one. So now NDI scan converter is watching this window, which is our Keynote presentation. We could even move this right off the edge of the screen if we wanted because we're going to bring it into our scene now. So I'm going to click on this uh, camera to add a new camera overlay like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change here. I'm going to change to NDI scan converter, which is this one uh, scan converter in brackets. So that's my uh, MacBook. So now we, this looks a little bit similar to the situation we just had, didn't it, with the uh, the iPad. We've now got a green screen. And just to show you, if I bring this keynote presentation across, it is basically copying what's in that window. And once again, we can come into Ecamm Live. And as long as we've got the uh, scan converter selected in camera effects, we can just repeat that process of making a green screen, uh, making it a transparent background and then adjusting the keying slightly as we need to to get the uh, slide working now one thing to note now this is only a minor thing <laughs> but it might be a major thing to some people if you are as uh, detail focused as i am when the uh, output is put out to a window from a keynote you see that uh, apple have gone all rounded corners on us and they want to make everything all nice and pretty and give it these little rounded corners so this window has rounded corners and what you'll notice is just here We've got little white corners in the corner of Scan Converter because it has captured those little round corners. So uh, there is no green there and hence we can see those little corners. So uh, you might want to bear that in mind and if you are as uh, 
ADD as me, <laughs> then uh, or OCD rather, <laughs> I'm a bit of both to be honest, uh, then uh, you might want to just make the window a little bit bigger and scale it so that those little white corners are not encroaching on your view and uh, yeah, burning your eyes <laughs> if they grab your attention. So that is how we would do it with NDI. And you can see just by this picture, can't you really, the difference between the colors on there and the colors on there. And again, that is because of uh, the green screen. It's sort of almost taking the green out of that as well. So uh, yeah, just bear that in mind when you're creating your, uh, your colors. But this does give us the uh, full effect that we're looking for. So we can animate the uh, points in and we can also animate the points out as well. Now I'm going to show you a little uh, cheat here if you want to avoid all of that color correction nonsense and uh, this is really specifically for people if I just uh, exit my uh, demo mode I've moved my icons around on my stream deck again and I'm uh, all uh, losing my positions. <laughs> if you are using a green screen like I do <laughs> then there is a way that you can actually cheat and get much higher quality graphics into your uh, presentations uh, that maybe people might not uh, notice so I'm going to show you how to do that now as well by just loading up this other quick presentation okay so here is a uh, another presentation <laughs> and this might look a little bit strange but this, as I say, is only for those using green screens. <laughs> uh, here you can see that I've basically duplicated the background that I have in my uh, green screen uh, to the background of the slides themselves. And now what I can do is if I run that as a presentation and uh, go to play and play slideshow in window again, now I've got this presentation and if you, as you can see if I cycle through these then it's basically going to put the uh, slides over the top. So now what I can do is I can go to my uh, scan converter again just make sure that it's now grabbed onto this particular window. And if I go into uh, my uh, scene here I've now got scan converter on the top and but I want this below my uh, by, below my scene. But now I have want to take the background off so I've got my uh, my camera selected so I'm going to come into my camera effects and I'm going to select my camera and then what I'm going to do is instead of having this background I'm just going to make it transparent so you saw there was a bit of a move there because I'm quite got it properly lined up and that's probably because I resized the uh, the background wasn't it so if that had been perfectly sized <laughs> then it would have fit perfectly just as it was uh, before so I'll just do that uh, even though we've got that slight corner issue but never mind uh, let me drag this over like this. Sometimes I do find that these buttons get in the way, but there is a shortcut that I can use for that to actually hide the user interface. There we go, that makes it much easier. Uh, so there we go. Uh, now this is the slides, and so if I add my camera back in, uh, you can see that if I take the uh, scan converter away, I'm literally on a black background, so there is no background to me at the moment. So now what I can do is if I'm back into my key, uh, keynote presentation, I can just simply cycle through. And uh, what I need to do, though, is I've still got green screen turned on uh, for this, even though I don't actually need it to be. So I'm going to come back into scan converter for this one. And I'm just going to deactivate the green screen. And there you can see I have totally replicated the colors from the slides themselves. And so these do then come up slightly behind me. But depending on how you were doing the presentation, uh, this would be one way that you could uh, you could do it. And so there we've got the points sliding in behind me. And then when I finished, they'll slide out again. As I say, that final one only really works if you've got a green screen. Uh, if you wanted to be a little bit clever about it, you could take a picture of your background <laughs> uh, from your camera with you not sitting there and use that as the background in your slides and then actually just use a, a, a green screen to replicate your real background. Sounds like a bit of a workaround really, but uh, might just uh, be the solution for some of you. Now, in terms of actually advancing the slides, uh, when you're using Keynote on the uh, Mac, then you can obviously also use a presentation clicker, something like this. I'll leave a link to these in the description. And I also did a video all about how you can use these, uh, specifically with Ecamm Live, actually, for switching scenes. So they're great for that as well. But here we're just obviously using it to control our uh, 
our keynote presentation and we can just simply click the buttons to cycle forwards and backwards but did you know there is also the keynote app on the phone on the iphone and you can actually link that with keynote to use that as the remote for your slides as well so that might be another option uh, that you might not have thought about so perhaps now what i'll do is i'll come out of demo mode again and i'll just show you quickly exactly how you do that right so i've now got uh Power, uh, keynotes open on my desktop with that presentation we were just looking at and I've also just down below me <laughs> got a view of my mobile my cell phone running uh, keynote as well and just up right in the very top right hand corner of the mobile it might be a little bit small to see but there's a picture of it looks a bit like an iphone with a little play button next to it just underneath the battery icon there at the top now if i click on that it's going to say you can use your phone as a remote control uh, for your uh, slides and so the way that we do that is we click continue on there and then it's going to have that little connection uh, a spot <laughs> appearing but now what we need to do is we need to go over to keynote and we need to come up to keynote in the uh, preferences so go up to the keynote menu and then come down to preferences and of course it's opened up on my other monitor right over this side and uh, in preferences you've got some general preferences slideshow rulers but you've got this one called remote and anything that is on the network assuming you are on the same wi-fi network and you've activated it on the phone then you'll see that it is appearing here as well so you just click on the link button and then it's going to ask me to uh, just confirm that that number is the same on my phone so if i just as you can see they both match so if i click confirm then my uh, phone is now my remote for the um, presentation so if I were to click on that big red play button then what that should do is it should and it's opened it up in full screen mode obviously <laughs> if I open my presentation in uh, uh, single uh, window mode so play slideshow in window uh, then you should see that I can just press done and then I'm now seeing on my phone what I can see on the screen and bear in mind these were going to be these ones with my background uh, and if I just swipe through or just tap on the screen on my mobile on my uh, iPhone then uh, yeah there we go it's just operating the uh, scenes or the slides rather that way so that is how you can use your iPhone as a remote for Keynote as well. So that has given you basically four different ways that you can bring your slides from Keynote and hopefully has given you a few different things to think about in terms of the sort of pros and cons of each one. You do have to watch out for that color uh, issue when you are using a green screen uh, as opposed to, uh, oh, if I just take my mobile off the screen, my phone, <laughs> uh, where's it gone? It's here somewhere. There we go, got rid of it. <laughs> so yes, it's something just to bear in mind with that color correction issue if you want to have them as floating overlays over the top and just bear in mind uh, not to have anything that's too much in the, the uh, green spectrum. As I say, I'll be doing a video about how you can do a similar thing with uh, PowerPoint because there are a few subtle differences, uh, but that will be for another video. If you found this video useful, then please do go ahead and hit that like button and also subscribe and turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever I make any new videos. And speaking of which, I've got plenty more coming right up. Uh, so check out those over on the right hand side. Have a great day.